The bidding went on very quickly. Perhaps it was because the Minder family had realized that their progress was slow. They had given up on the last round because they couldn't keep up with the others. The remaining ones were the Parker family, Coopers, and Glory sect, just as everyone had expected. Logically speaking, Radiance shouldn't have reached its current level. However, George's methods were too brilliant, even if his overall strength couldn't compare to it. However, one had to admit that the Radiance was doing pretty well in the new energy source. After this result was announced, Emily was not surprised. Furthermore, she only listened to Tori's request for the next round. To the Coopers, it was easy as long as it was carried out as usual. The most important thing was naturally to see how George would deal with it. However, what was more surprising today was that Carter only sat at the side the entire time. The one who really spoke was Tori. Emily frowned and looked at the man's indifferent expression. She always had a feeling that the Minder family was not as simple as they imagined. However, Carter held back on the matter of the Minder family, so she did not want to continue asking. If what she got was a lie, she would be the first one to be unable to bear it. In fact, her relationship with Carter seemed much closer than before. She could see love in a man's eyes, not the indifference and indifference from before, but it was just the calm before the storm. Assuming, no, now was not a hypothesis. The reason Carter lied to her was because he had his own plans and schemes. Eventually, it would explode. Emily did not question him because she did not want to miss or give up, even if it was just a facade of peace. After the meeting ended, Tori kept staring at her alertly. Emily felt bored, so she stood up and left. She did not expect to bump into Allison on the way. From the looks of it, she must have specially waited for her. Allison had always been dressed in fine luxury clothing, and it reflected that she was a female CEO everywhere. Her nails were always very conspicuous. Although she was quite old, she was still wearing a black professional suit, but she kept her figure. She was wearing a red beret with black strands of hair on the edges. However, from the looks of it, it was impeccable. However, it was that look in his eyes that made everyone want to step on everyone. Emily always felt uncomfortable being looked at by her. At this moment, her face turned cold and she prepared to treat her as a transparent person. Allison naturally saw Emily coming over early. She had specially waited here. And now that she saw that someone had come, she opened her mouth and wanted to start mocking. But she never would have thought that Emily did not even look at her and walked straight towards her side. Stop! Allison shouted coldly. She hated people who ignored her the most, especially Emily in front of her. So before she could say anything, a fire rushed up from her stomach and made her unable to maintain her calm. Emily shot a glance. Oh, it's you, Allison. I thought it was someone. Why are you standing here? Damon, who was standing behind Allison, could not help but cover his mouth and forcefully suppress his laughter. Are you blind? Are you trying to fool me? Allison clenched her teeth. She glared fiercely at Emily and then said mockingly, Me? It is because I see you are all too tired. You are too busy working on this project. In the end, it is still useless. Ever since she held power, she had never succeeded in any project that involved competing with Emily. This time, it was not easy for her to seize the opportunity to trample the other party under her feet. Allison proudly raised her tail. Emily gave her an indifferent look. Before the last moment, why are you so confident that the Parker family can get the project? Is there a need to say that? What is the Parker family? What is your Coopers? There is no comparison at all. Allison sneered. Emily sneered. Really? Then why do I defeat you so many times? Speaking of which, my father and I wanted to visit President Parker to thank you. Tell me about it. In this year, if you do not give me so many opportunities, I don't know. I thought you were someone I planted in the Parker family. You! You, you bitch! Allison could not finish her sentence and wanted to slap Emily's face. Emily quickly retreated and calmly pointed at the monitor behind them. This place can capture anything. 
I don't mind making a headline. It's just that you need to save yourself. What kind of well-educated rich girl do you usually do? If you behave like this, then you will face the consequences. That would really be a disgrace for you. Allison was so angry that her entire body trembled. She was secretly angry. Every time she was taken advantage of by Emily, but she still did not want to give up. How long do you think you can be arrogant for? Emily, if my guess is correct, your Coopers is only busy with this one project this season. If the result is not for you guys, you don't need me to tell you the consequences. Your good days will come to an end immediately. Allison gritted her teeth. Every word carried a strong hatred. Emily's face turned stony. I don't understand what you mean. This Minder family is openly bidding. Now that all three sides have the chance to enter, let's not talk about us anymore. There's even a third chance of becoming glorious. How did it end up with you? Could it be that you have some insider information? I have an explanation for that. Why don't we make a trip to the notary office? Allison was stunned for a moment. She just wanted to show off in front of Emily. She did not expect this and immediately turned pale, but she quickly adjusted herself. She said coldly, Bitch, you only know how to talk. If you don't believe me, we'll see. I'll let you see how miserable the outcome of fighting against our Parker family is. All right, don't worry about what happens to me. President Parker, I never thought that I would be able to fight against the Parker family. However, that was only the Parker family led by Eric Cooper, not you. Go and ask around. Nine out of ten people know who is the one who is dragging the Parker family down. Emily smiled and walked forward. She raised her hand and tidied the edges of Allison's hat. She said indifferently, President Parker, sometimes it's better to know your own limitations. Hearing the words caused Allison's expression to change for a moment. She was so angry her entire body was trembling. She pointed at Emily's nose but couldn't say a word. Emily turned around and said to Damon before she left, Secretary Damon, thank you for your hard work. Her words were full of meaning. Damon had suffered a lot over the past year. He'd had offers from other companies, but he had stayed. The reason he endured Allison was because he wanted to guard the Parker family and wait for their king to return. Now that Emily could cut down Allison with just a few words, Damon felt relief in his heart. It was nice to see Allison knocked off her high horse. Emily shook her head, the emotion of the moment slowly dissipating. She was slowly calming down. She didn't hate Allison, not exactly, but there was something decidedly off about her. Emily didn't know if it was because she had taken Eric's position or if it was something else. If it hadn't been anyone else, Emily knew she wouldn't have pushed so hard to belittle her. Despite that, Allison continually came back for more. It was exhausting. It was like a carousel neither one of them knew how to get off of. Walking to the garage, she was alone with her thoughts, or so she thought. Walking to where she parked her car, she pulled her keys out and unlocked it. Getting in, she closed the door and fastened her seatbelt. Adjusting the rear view mirror, just as she was about to turn the key to start the car, the driver's side door was yanked open. She was awash in a familiar scent, her scream dying in her throat. She turned to look at Carter. He was leaning against the car, face close to her. Are you getting in? Emily's expression did not change as she started the car. Carter nodded but did not say anything else, walking around to the passenger side. Getting in, he fastened his seatbelt and looked at Emily. She could feel that Carter had something on his mind, but she did not dare to ask. She was afraid of what he might say. If he didn't ask him anything... She was even more afraid that he would lie. She drove on in silence, the air in the car stuffy. When they were almost to the Coopers, Carter cleared his throat and said, I want to see a psychiatrist. The words were so surprising. Emily almost lost control of the car, breaking suddenly. You do? When? I, I mean, why? She did not say anything else. She wanted to ask him if he thought he truly was Eric Parker. Would he have answered honestly if she asked? 
She wasn't sure. But why else would he want to see a psychiatrist? Emily swallowed her words, not wanting to aggravate Carter. Carter looked at her indifferently. There was sadness in his eyes. Tomorrow, I just want to go and see what a psychiatrist says. The longer he pretended nothing was wrong, the more certain he was that something was definitely off. He felt that something was wrong more and more. Every time he wanted to recall what had happened before the accident, his head would hurt. He had done some online research on Eric Parker. There wasn't a great deal, but there was enough. Reading through the information, Carter felt like he might be the man known as Eric Parker. The problem was, every time he had thoughts like that, it felt as if fire ants were swarming through his head, gnawing on his brain. Each time it happened, he had to stop. Carter should have realized something was wrong months ago. It just didn't make sense to not have any memories prior to the accident. However, he did not tell Emily what he was feeling or why he wanted to see the psychiatrist. He also didn't want to give her false hope. Carter was also afraid he was just fueling wishful thinking. He was falling in love with Emily little by little. Each time he saw her, his heart swelled. He could see it in her eyes. She felt the same way. He cared for Tori, probably even loved her. But he was in love with Emily, heart and soul. All right, do you need me to take you there? Emily asked softly, trying to keep hope out of her words. Carter shook his head. No, I think I'll go on my own. They fell into a strange silence again. It wasn't that there hadn't been silence between the two of them in the past, but it was always comfortable. Not the way it was now. Both of them were struggling. They clearly had a lot on their minds, but neither of them could speak. Their words just died in their mouths. It was Carter who broke the silence. He looked at Emily and asked, Can you give up on the Minder family project? The question took Emily by surprise. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Why would I do that? We're in the running to be awarded the project. Why would I give up now? Why would Carter want her to give up on the project? Did he know something she didn't? Or had he been lying about the possibility of her getting the project? It didn't make sense. Emily pressed him on the matter. Carter's words were like a catalyst. The silence washed away. Emily's face was stony. Carter, you were the one who said that the Minder family was willing to entertain our offer. You asked me to prepare everything in advance for future cooperation. But what about now? Why are you asking me to give up? It doesn't make any sense. None of this makes sense, Carter. You're also out doing projects on your own, out from under Tori's thumb. Why would you ask me to stop? Her voice trembled with emotion. She wanted to ask him why he made her believe in him, but didn't. She choked back the words, biting the tip of her tongue to hold on to the tidal wave of emotion. She didn't want to destroy this last bit of hope flickering in her heart. Carter's face was alive with dark frustration. His hand gripped the door handle tightly. So you don't believe me? Emily punched the steering wheel hard as her answer, the horn honking sharply. They were both lost in a turmoil of thoughts. Emily took a deep breath and held back the anger that kept trying to escape. Why should I? Give me a reason to believe you and tell me why I should give up. Carter was silent at first, his fingers drumming along the side door panel. After a while, he said, This is just my intuition, but I think... Enough! Emily's words were like cold water on a fire as she pulled up to the Coopers. Do you think I will believe you now? Do you think I can ever believe anything you say? Carter, I am not a fool. I know what's going on. Carter had no words. He didn't say a single word. Instead, he gave Emily a deep look. Then he opened the door and got out of the car. The door was slammed shut. She knew Carter was hurting, probably more than she was. Emily knew he was struggling with finding out the truth about himself. And while his admission to wanting to see a psychiatrist was a good sign, she was done hoping. It was too exhausting. 
Emily still trembled with anger, lowering her head into her hands for a moment. She was at a loss of what to do. There were times when she felt Carter was lying, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe he thought he was being honest. If Tori was filling his head full of lies, maybe he didn't know what was truly going on. It wasn't Eric who was lying to her, but rather Carter, and he was at Tori's mercy. So she could forgive him. She raised her head and looked for Carter, but didn't see him. Putting the car in gear, she drove to find him. It was only a second of hesitation, but she always felt better with him nearby, even if he didn't realize who he was or how important he was to her. She knew he was just being used, a pawn in Tori's sick game. Moreover, he was truly Eric. She knew it in her bones. How could she be angry at the man? Emily grew more anxious the more she thought about it. She sped up, eyes looking for him in the crowds moving up and down the street. She didn't see him but continued to look. Where was he? He hadn't left the car that long ago. Carter couldn't have gotten very far. And yet she couldn't find him. He had vanished. She drove all the way to the Minder estate, eyes still searching for him. But he was nowhere to be found. She couldn't help but frown. Where was he? She took out her phone and dialed Carter's number, but he didn't answer. Could it be that he was angry? Why would he be angry? Because of his own suspicions about the truth? Emily weakly leaned back in her seat, lost in thought. Carter was sent to the hospital. This time he didn't faint. Instead he fell to the ground in a daze, maintaining his clarity. Because of this, he had been enduring the pain all the way to the hospital. It was as if someone was cutting his head with a knife. The pain spiked with each beat of his troubled heart. His body twitched, covered in a cold sweat. He wasn't about to give up, though. Through the pain, he gritted his teeth, not making a sound until he was sent to the operating table for his checkup. He didn't like the look on the doctor's face. He seemed worried, anxious. Carter's face was beyond pale, ashen. The doctor looked concerned as he helped Carter lie down on the table. The doctor did a comprehensive assessment and gave him a painkiller to deal with the pain he was feeling. Only then did Carter feel a small sense of relief from the pain. It was still there, thudding away behind his eyes, making it hard to concentrate. Sir, is your family in New York City? The doctor asked taking out some papers from a file on the desk. We can contact them for you and have them come down here to keep you company. We need them to come down and be with you, monitoring your condition, and taking care of you while we run more tests. The doctor continued to frown as he looked over Carter. Carter shook his head and frowned. When he opened his mouth, he realized his voice had become hoarse at some point. No, family. Tell me what's going on, please. I need to know what's happening to me. Your brain has been seriously damaged. While you stay conscious, you are in a very precarious state. Had you fainted, you would most likely be in a vegetative state. I strongly suggest you be admitted to the hospital for more tests. I'd like you to stay with us for a couple of days. We can give you a diagnosis and discuss surgical options if warranted. The doctor was obviously concerned about his condition. He seemed surprised Carter had been able to endure the pain he had experienced. Carter smiled unsteadily. The doctor did not know his willpower. Carter shook his head at the doctor's comments. He didn't want to be a vegetable, and he didn't want to do anything that might cause that to happen. But he couldn't sit idly by in the hospital. Expressionless, Carter looked like a broken man. The doctor opened his mouth to try to convince him to stay but realized there was no changing this man's mind. It was a miracle he had managed to get himself to the hospital. He didn't think the man would be as lucky next time. Watching the man as he sat on the edge of the bed, staring at his hands, the doctor knew the next time he saw him, the man would likely be dead. There was nothing they could do to help his condition, unless he stayed for a few days and allowed them to do a full battery of tests. The doctor stepped outside the operating room and into the hallway. Carter frowned and thought about what had happened since he got out of the car. He wondered what he should do. 
now that he strongly suspected Emily had been right all along. He was indeed Eric Parker. How else could he explain every time he thought about Eric? He suffered extreme pain. He would faint when the pain became too much to bear. If that wasn't a sign, he didn't know what was. The more he thought about his situation, the more he wanted to get his life back and prove he was Eric Parker. He knew what had to be done but was worried. Certainly, he had an incredibly high tolerance for pain. But that didn't mean he didn't experience pain. It was slowly eroding his brain. He knew it was. It continually stopped him from thinking about Eric Parker, Emily, and his past. He realized that despite everything he wished for, there was a slight possibility he wasn't Eric Parker. But the vast majority of him knew he was. It was the only explanation for why he didn't have any memories of his own. He couldn't remember Eric's memories because they were too painful. But why couldn't he remember himself? His childhood? It didn't make any sense. He felt as if he were a drifting boat on rough seas, his thoughts crashing into his head over and over. Carter started to feel lost. Even when he had first woken up and found out he had lost his memory, he had never been as lost as he was now. At that time, it was all up to someone else to decide who he was and what he should do about his injuries. If Tori said he was Carter, then he was. He felt that no matter who he was, he was in the same predicament of disappointing one woman and thrilling another. In the end, he supposed the memories really didn't matter. He didn't need to know who he was in the past. He needed to decide who he was in the future. And in that future, he wanted to be Eric Parker, heart and soul. He wanted it decided once and for all, so he could put it all behind him and live out his life without wondering, without considering, without hurting. He definitely wanted to be Eric Parker. All because of that woman. Because of Emily's unwavering love and belief he was her lost love. He wanted to have her, sharing a bed together but not just in a physical sense. He wanted to be with her completely. Carter wanted to live in his heart, seeing her every morning when they woke up together. He wanted it all with her, and her alone. Carter looked at his hands in a daze, unsure of how to proceed. He did not know how many times he had asked himself the same question, but it came again. Who was he exactly? After several minutes, Carter got up from his bed and left the hospital. His footsteps were heavy, each step deliberate, each step weighed down by the worry in his heart. His expression was one of loss. When he returned to the Minder family, Tori had been waiting for him. When she saw him return, she heaved a sigh of relief. Where did you go? You didn't answer your phone. Carter, don't do this next time, okay? I'm so worried when I can't get a hold of you. Answer one question first. Why is the Parker family preparing all kinds of new energy reserves? Don't tell me you don't know. They are obviously preparing for this project. Have you already partnered with them? Was this all some big show? Did you reveal something to them in advance? Carter asked with a cold face. This was also why he warned Emily to temporarily withdraw from the bidding today. His intuition told him that this matter was not right. Tori had stacked the deck in her favor. When Tori heard this, she looked hurt, but her eyes burned with fire. Carter, I explained it to you in the meeting after meeting. We rejected the Parker family. You were there at that time the decision was made. How can you think something has changed? You know how I feel about the Parker family. I don't understand why they have prepared. Perhaps they see an angle for a future business deal. Allison is nothing if not cunning. Why are you looking at me like that? Are you suspecting me of something now? But I have always been honest with you from the start. Here I am telling you the truth. Think about it for a moment. What reason do I have to lie to you? Her words were mixed with tears, eyes welling with them. She looked terrified and worried. Carter wouldn't be swayed this time. Not today. He continued to look at her indifferently, his face holding no pity for her. I don't know where you heard the news or what made you suspect something is going on, but I assure you there isn't. Do you know how long I have longed for your love? I know you are confused by that woman, Emily. 
Do you know how painful my heart has been during this period? But I am willing to stick with it and ride this storm out because of you. Tori fiercely pounded her chest. Do you know how much pain I feel in my heart? Hurts every time I see you light up when Emily comes into a room. If you hadn't fallen off the cliff and lost your memory, we would be married right now. And instead, everything has changed. Carter looked at her inside. She walked over, hand rubbing up and down her upper arm, his eyes sincere. If you want to help, then help. It's just like what I said before. I want you to help me arrange an appointment with a psychiatrist as soon as possible. I want to recover my memory. I'm tired of waiting. Although his tone was firm, he did not dare face the question that popped into his mind. If he truly did regain his memory and turned out to not be Eric Parker, what was to happen? Carter loved Tori and Eric loved Emily. One of them would be destroyed by the truth. Carter continued to torture himself the rest of the night. He didn't know the answers, but he wanted to know what they were. He could not help smiling bitterly. The answer was obvious. His heart would never rest without knowing the truth. That night, Carter didn't go to the Cooper family estate. Instead, he went to his room and read everything he could about Eric's identity from beginning to end. In another part of the house, Tori made a phone call, tears in her eyes. Can we start the operation as soon as possible? It needs to be done now. He is already suspicious. I think he already knows the truth in his heart and we can't have that. You know how he is. If he discovers us, you and I will have to bear the consequences. Tori yelled into the phone. Don't worry, isn't this going according to the plan step by step? Tori, you are going to get anxious from time to time. This isn't easy. We need to stay the course and not lose our heads anytime he starts to remember. Since Emily came to sign the cooperation agreement with me, it proves she does not believe what Eric said at all. What do you have to worry about? Tori was not worried about business, but about what Carter would remember. She suddenly hung up the phone. There was absolutely nothing she could say to him to convince him of the dread she felt in her heart. The doctor couldn't know what she felt and knew nothing of the matters of love. He was a cold-hearted man with no hope of love in his own heart. Tori sat on the edge of the bed in frustration. She hadn't been able to control Carter at all recently. In the beginning, she could tell his every thought, his every desire. But lately, that changed. He was distant and untrusting. She didn't even know what he was thinking. If this went on, would Carter still follow her even after the operation was completed? No, he wouldn't let this matter go on as it is now. Tori clenched her fist and made another call. The next day, Tori took the initiative of bringing him to see a psychiatrist. Carter, I know you are anxious, and so am I. So I have made an appointment with the doctor. He's a famous psychiatrist in New York City. It's usually very difficult to make an appointment with him, but I pulled some strings so we could see him as soon as possible. My father helped to get the appointment scheduled and approved. Tori smiled, no longer as anxious as she'd been last night. Carter nodded, nervous excitement teasing him. Okay. The two of them went to the hospital and met with the famous psychiatrist. Although Tori had a smile on her face, when she saw the doctor, she gave him a look without batting an eye. The other party nodded slightly without changing his expression, letting her know he understood. Carter didn't notice, his focus on recovering his memories. He was completely unaware of what Tori and the doctor were up to. Sir, Tori told me about your condition. My personal opinion is that you should not force yourself to think about those past memories for the time being. It can be very dangerous. The doctor nodded slowly and continued. Your brain has not fully recovered yet from the injuries you sustained. If you push too soon, it could be quite dangerous. There could be brain damage and you could wind up in a vegetative state. It's incredibly risky. The psychiatrist noted Carter's changing expression and said, How about this? In another two weeks, we can reevaluate and determine what the best course of action would be. Just two weeks. It's not that much longer. Then maybe we can give it a try at that time. Why? Carter frowned, obviously not happy with the news. You've fainted before, haven't you? The doctor asked. That can be quite a shock to your system. 
the fact that she survived a horrible fall and suffered a brain injury, but are still able to communicate and have had no loss of motor skill function. I truly believe if you give your body a chance to heal, the memories will come back on their own. My hope is after two weeks, you will be ready for the next step. In the meantime, I would suggest not thinking about your past or recovering your memories. Carter's expression suddenly changed. His manner was impatient. He stood up and said coldly, at most a week. The doctor nodded. When Carter turned around to leave the office, Tori nodded slightly. She was quite satisfied with the result today. After Carter came out of the office, his expression was troubled, anger brewing in his eyes. His brows were tightly knitted, and his jaw was clenched. Carter, you just need to be a little more patient. I think it's important. Carter didn't let her finish. Interrupting her, he said, I think I will go out for a while. He spun around and left. In the past, Tori would follow him angrily, but this time she just stood there and looked at the man's back. She waited until he disappeared around the corner of the building before her face darkened, and she walked back the way she came. In the doctor's office, she stood in front of his desk with arms crossed, a stern look on her face. What you said today was right. A week later, I want to see your results. Tori's voice was bitter. She wanted Carter to have a psychological intervention today, but the doctor said it was too risky and needed some time to prepare. She could not give up. This was going to happen, and happen soon. The doctor quickly nodded and then looked at Tori hesitantly. Tori, you do not understand Carter's situation is not very good. As I told you the last time, if you continue to interfere with his mind, there is a good chance he will become a vegetable, or possibly die. It is more than possible. Is that really what you want? Tori was tired of hearing the doctor's excuses. She only wanted Carter by her side. That was the most important thing. She didn't care what the consequences were. She wanted him, period. She revealed a cruel smile. Do as I say. I can bear the outcome. So what if he's in a vegetative state? Even if he's in a vegetative state, he's still mine. She would much rather have Carter to be in a vegetative state than to watch him slowly drift away just to be in Emily's arms. There was no way she was going to lose him to her. Not this time. He would completely belong to her. When the doctor saw her expression, he shivered. Emily did not know how many times she yawned today, but it was obvious she was tired. Her eyes were filled with tears because of the yawn. The corners of her eyes were slightly red, and it was clear she did not have a good night's rest. Estelle asked with concern, What's wrong? Didn't you sleep well last night? Not only did she not sleep well, but she also stared at the ceiling until dawn. Emily didn't share everything with Estelle. She knew if Estelle found out, it was equivalent to her father finding out. She did not want them to worry. She stretched her back popping and said, with a smile, I had a troubling nightmare last night. It kept coming back every time I tried to close my eyes. Estelle carefully looked at her and saw that her expression did not change much. So she said, You need to pay attention to your own body. You keep pushing yourself in business and with the Carter situation and something is going to happen. Something bad. Emily smiled. She wanted to take care of her body. She always did, but she did not know how to get herself to fall asleep. Without Carter, it was impossible. She wasn't surprised Carter didn't come to see her last night. After all, he had made sure she couldn't find him after he got out of the car. She needed to just remain calm. Emily needed to talk to him, but wanted it to be on his terms. She didn't want to chase him. By the way, there will be an announcement tomorrow about which companies are left. Do we know for sure which family has entered the last round? There won't be any mistakes in the middle of this thing, right? Estelle's face was full of worry. Emily frowned and tensed her body. Let's take a look first. Anyway, we will know the answer by tomorrow. Emily. Estelle called out and looked at Emily again. Only then did she say softly, I don't know if it's just me or not, but I have always felt you are not very enthusiastic about this project. It's like you're always avoiding it. This isn't your style. In the past, no matter what project we encountered, you were fully invested in it. 
Whether we do it or not, you are always all in on the project. But with this project, something is different. This time you're sleepwalking through it. The rest was self-evident. Estelle did not even need to say it out loud. Emily was stunned for a moment. She thought that she hid it well, but in reality, she hadn't. Estelle was still able to see through it. She wanted to prepare for this project from the beginning. She knew Carter would make an appearance, and she wanted to be ready for it. If she were on her own and not tied to Cooper's, she might consider Carter's opinion. However, considering the ramifications of her decision and what it might do to Cooper's, she withdrew without any dispute. Rather than saying that she was rejecting the project, it would be better to say she was rejecting her doubts about Carter. That brought a smile to her lips. Emily, you have a lot on your mind. You have thought about many things. This is to your advantage. I don't want this to become a habit of dragging you down one day. In fact, you should trust your instincts. They have served you well all this time. Estelle kept her voice down. Emily looked at her in surprise. Wait a minute. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Until now, Estelle had been very much in favor of the project and the cooperation with Glory. Because you rarely come across a situation like this. I know there is a lot of emotion wrapped up in this deal. Just trust what you feel in your heart. If you really feel something is wrong, we still have many other choices. Estelle smiled and squeezed Emily's arm. You shouldn't be so worried. Things always have a way of working out. You know, we can always discuss anything you like. I'm always here for you. Oh my, just look at you. Estelle said, eyes looking up and down Emily's figure. If you continue to lose weight, I won't even be able to pinch your flesh. Emily smiled and sighed. Actually, it's not that I don't want to discuss it, Estelle. It's not that at all. I just don't know what I've become like. Don't worry, I'm fine. It's been an adjustment, but I'm doing well with it all. Trust me, it won't affect our overall progress. I'm talking about your body. Estelle chuckled, shaking her head at Emily. Emily laughed. Don't worry, I will take good care of myself. She hoped she sounded more confident than she felt. The Minder family estate was abuzz with the bidding competition. They were going to announce the final two families remaining in the running. Allison was naturally the last to arrive. She sat at the front without looking at the other two families. She was not in the mood to play nice with the rest of these imbeciles. When they announced the Parker family had won the bid, she was going to take her time telling the other two competitors how they didn't even deserve to be in the same room with her. As her eyes noticed Emily, she rolled her eyes. When would that woman finally get a clue that she didn't belong? Emily was too tired to bother glaring back at Allison. She was here for business, and business only. She wanted to try to leave the fireworks out of it all. She wasn't in the mood. She'd realized that the more she dished out, the more it fueled Allison's anger. Minding her own business, Emily was surprised to hear Allison's voice. Apparently, she was taking advantage of the fact the meeting hadn't started yet. Allison laughed loudly before saying, Emily, I'm always shocked that they let you in here. You definitely look every bit the jailbird you were for six years. Don't you think you could shower from time to time and maybe put some makeup on? I think it really might help with your pasty complexion. Because let me tell you, you are definitely pasty looking. That's not a good thing. Why not try a little self-care from time to time? You're so dirty. If I'm so dirty and disgusting, why do you constantly want to talk to me every time? All I have to do is walk by and you have to take notice. If I'm so gross, why bother? Also, if you're just trying to get me to notice you because you want to be my friend, then why not just ask? There's no need to go through all this craziness every time we're in the same room together. Just ask me directly. I'll probably say no. I mean, you're not a nice person. Why would I want to be friends with you? You? What did you say? Why would I want to be friends with an ex-con like you? You're disgusting. You're not even worthy of my time. Then why do you spend so much time yelling at me like you're doing right now? If I'm not worth your time, then why waste so much of it? Allison pointed at Emily's nose, but her words wouldn't come her mouth opening and closing a couple of times. 
Oh, Allison, dear sweet Allison, I'm just not worthy of talking to a high and mighty member of the Parker family. How could I ever hope to climb the ladder to ascend to your heights? Emily rolled her eyes dramatically. Didn't you notice me walking around you so I wouldn't dirty the air you had to breathe? It was you who lashed out at me because you're not confident in your current position. You're worried you might lose it. Allison was about to get angry when the door of the meeting room suddenly opened. Tori entered with Carter in tow. Just wait for the announcement and then let's see how you act like you're high and mighty. Allison said in an angry whisper. Emily faked a yawn, making it seem like she was bored. It drove Allison nuts. Emily looked at Carter and tried hard to ignore Tori standing beside him. It looked like Carter had lost even more weight. Gone were the wide shoulders and thickly muscled arms. He looked haggard. He didn't look healthy at all. Emily felt a finger of worry begin to work its way into her heart. Eric had always been muscular and fit. She had loved to see him without a shirt on when they went to the beach. That body was gone. Her heart ached for him. She wished she could just run up to him and tell him the truth and bring him home to take care of him. She wished for a lot of things. When he found her as he looked away, the smile died on her lips. He wouldn't look at her again. What was going on? Her doubts began to creep into her thoughts. Emily frowned and heard Tori's sweet voice saying, Regarding the bidding procedure, we have narrowed it down. I would like to say the remaining companies all presented quite well. They all had many positive aspects. We would like to thank you for your continued interest in the Minder family ventures. Emily's attention had been focused on Carter. Estelle noticed Emily wasn't listening. She slipped off her shoe and kicked Emily's foot under the table to help bring her back to her senses. Emily jumped and glared at Estelle, who pointed to the stage and mouthed the words, Pay attention. Emily nodded and forced herself to focus on what Tori was saying. Opposite her, George was looking at her and revealed a confident smile. There is no need to say these polite words. Just get on with and make the announcement already. Allison raised her eyebrows impatiently and sighed loudly. Allison looked at George mockingly. How dare such a small company come to such an illustrious occasion? I really don't know why you're here. You will be humiliated by the end of it. George stayed calm. He just smiled faintly. There was no anger on his face. No resentment in his eyes. I have to disagree. I feel you might be ill-informed about the standing of our company. Glory is very competitive in the new energy field. We plan to compete on the world stage with other industry leaders. Tori heard the disagreement and chimed in. Glory has been remarkable in its ability to expand to its current state in such a short period. Really impressive. Aw, isn't that sweet? Tori coming to your rescue? Well, she won't always be there defending you or your company. Better what yourself, George. All right, Tori, now that you've broken up our discussion, why not just make the announcement? Quit wasting all of our time and get on with it. That way we can thin the herd and move on. Tori looked at her secretary who handed her a folder. Very well then. I will not waste everyone's time and directly announce the results. First of all, everyone did very well on this project. Our staff had a difficult time choosing who was the best candidate. Tori looked around, letting the tension build a little bit more. I'd like to congratulate you all on the fine presentations. The companies joining us are going to be... Tori was bathed in lights, standing center stage. Carter beside her. She smiled as she took out a piece of paper from the folder. Taking a step closer to the microphone, she said, Congratulations to the Coopers and to Glory. They have reached the final round in the bidding competition. At this time, we'd like to thank the Parker family for their interest in our endeavor. We wish them luck and hope they will see their way to bidding next year on another project. Tori's voice was bright, her smile genuine. She knew how to present to a crowd. She also knew how to drive the stake a little deeper into Allison's chest. Allison stood dumbfounded. At first, she thought she misheard Tori. Surely she had to have misunderstood something the woman had said. But then... Watching the reaction of Emily and George, she realized they had won the bid. She looked at Tori, who looked away from her almost immediately. She wasn't about to stay quiet. 
What did you say? Allison's face was red with anger, her eyes alive with fury. She didn't care about decorum or proper etiquette. She needed answers. She demanded to know what happened. Do you have any idea what you're doing? Tori raised her eyebrows in embarrassment. Taking a step back from the front edge of the stage, she wanted to get away from Allison. I am sorry, Allison, but the bidding announcement is over. As you know, our bidding is open and fair. It is under the regulatory borough. While you did have an impressive plan, you lack the assets to back it up. While we were combing through your presentation, we came across a mistake in your data. Impossible! Allison shrieked, her face beat red. It was a low-level mistake. Impossible! Tori, I'm giving you 30 seconds to make this right. I have made preparations for this project. We are ready to move forward with it. We've done so much already. And now you're telling me that you're kicking us out this round? I demand a recount. Her comment didn't even make any sense. Allison was reeling with the news. Allison, we will send all the pertinent information to you later this day. I'm sorry, but this discussion is closed. Tori stepped away from the microphone, leaving with Carter by her side. Allison thought about storming the stage and throttling the woman, but she thought better of it. She realized it wasn't just her reputation that would be tarnished, but her family's as well. Allison felt as if she'd been slapped twice in a matter of minutes. Between her discussion with Emily and now, being told she was out of the bidding, her mind was reeling. She was at odds with everyone in the room. Not a single person liked her. Some of the higher-ups had shown up to today, their faces angry, their gazes downcast. Allison gritted her teeth and clenched her fists by her sides. How would she recover from this? Initially, they wanted to hold their heads high, but the result had actually turned out like this. Allison was so angry that she gritted her teeth and clenched her fists tightly. They talked amongst themselves. Allison could hear their comments. We've lost all standing in one fell swoop. How should I explain this to the outside world? Everyone in New York City knows we've participated in the Minder family's bidding war. What are we supposed to do now? How can we be kicked out already? Do you know what the media will say? Who knows? If only Eric were here, we wouldn't be in this predicament. We're going to be thought of as a joke. We are going to take a big financial hit from this. Allison was right about one thing. We are levered to the hilt. We put a lot of money behind Allison in this process. I'm reluctant to allow Allison to continue. We will have to take her future with us under advisement. In a single afternoon, the company had become a laughing stock. Despite all the assurances of Allison about how things would go, it had all become a mess. It would take years to recover from this debacle. If only Eric were still leading the company, they were all sure this wouldn't have happened. Eric would have handled things much better. He would never have left us so exposed to a project like this. He would have protected us and ensured the outcome. She had never been more humiliated in all of her life. Allison was mortified. She had to do something. She had to rectify this situation. She couldn't lose the trust of the Parker family. Allison took off toward Tori's office, bursting through the door. Tori looked shocked when Allison walked in. How dare you do this to me? You actually dare to play with me? Allison clenched her jaw and tried to slap Tori. Tori saw it coming and took a step backward. Allison missed and lost her balance, falling down, her head hitting the edge of one of the tables. She saw stars explode in her vision. Allison blinked to try to clear her vision. Her fingers probed her scalp, hoping there wouldn't be any blood. There wasn't any, but she had a knot starting to swell beneath her fingertips. Allison, you better remember your place. You are at my house right now. If you try to strike me again, I will call security and you will be arrested. Please, save your family any further embarrassment and just leave. She glared at Tori. The woman had a smug look on her face. She knew she had won. Allison didn't like it, but it was true. She had been beaten by Tori. You told me we would be in the final bidding. You promised me, Tori. How can you do this to me? I trusted you. Are you seriously going to tell me you don't remember that conversation? You promised. I took you at your word. Tori, I am not a fool. 
I know what you did here today. I know it and I will not forget it. I will make you pay for what you've done to me. Tori glanced at her dismissively. Allison, you are most certainly mistaken. I have never promised anyone that they would get the project. Every company has an equal chance during the entire bidding process. You would have been in the running, but there was a mistake in your proposal. You shot yourself in the foot by providing worthless information in your proposal. You're the one who squandered this opportunity. Impossible! There wasn't anything wrong with the proposal. The data was all correct. I personally can vouch for the accuracy of the information. Tori's grin teased the edges of her mouth. But that wasn't what sickened Allison. No, it was more the look in her eye, the understanding of what just happened. It was only then that Allison understood she had stepped right into Tori's web of deceit. It was all there on Tori's face. Allison had made it seem like the Parker family was in good standing with the bidding process, but she now saw it for what it was. A scam. Allison had set her up from the beginning. Tori, I know what you've done here today. I can see by the look on your face you know it too. I'll let you have your moment in the sun, but I want you to hear something. Something important. I'm done arguing the point, but let me make this clear. What you've done today is make a lifelong enemy of the Parker family. I won't rest until I've exacted my revenge. You will taste defeat, Allison. Yes, you will. Tori couldn't keep the grin off of her face. Allison, I'm not sure I can make this any plainer than I already have. We would consider business dealings with your family. But at this time, you are stretched to the brink. I'm not sure what benefit there would be for the Parker family to do business with you. You've essentially destroyed the company, Allison. In a quiet voice, one filled with simmering hatred, Allison said, Let me tell you something. I want you to hear me and hear me good. You may have bested me this time, but you have not beaten me. Sleep well, Tori. I'll always be here reminding you that you'll never be safe. Allison left in a huff, slamming Allison's office door so loudly other employees looked in her direction. Panic flecked her heart as she went outside. She couldn't believe what had happened. She also couldn't believe what she was going to have to explain what had happened to the higher-ups. They would most assuredly demand information. She didn't want to think about the money they had already invested in this project, only. Once the news got out about the amount of money lost and how exposed the Parker family would be, how could they ever hope to recover? Allison did not dare to think further. Her face was pale as she walked toward her car, her heart pounding, her mind in turmoil. With keys in hand, she looked up, noticing Emily was standing nearby. It was the last person she wanted to see. In the blink of an eye, Allison used all her strength to push Emily, who was looking down at her phone for a moment. Emily wasn't paying attention and wasn't expecting Allison to react in such a way. She tried to get her feet set, but she was too late. Caught off guard, she fell over, her feet getting tangled. Just as she expected the concrete to come up and take a bite out of both kneecaps, someone grabbed her from behind. She felt someone's strong arms beneath her. She turned to thank them when she froze. She was looking into Carter's eyes, the grin teasing his mouth. Emily exhaled, staring at him, unable to say anything for a few moments. She stepped back from him, nodding, before finally able to find her voice again. Thank you. Carter just nodded, not saying anything. He just stared at Allison. Emily turned to face the woman who had just tried to shove her down. Aren't you worried about your job, your standing, your family, your reputation? Allison was speechless. She wasn't going to take it from Emily. She'd already had enough with Tori. There was no way she was going to put up with Emily, too. Me? Shame. Are you kidding? It was you who played tricks on me, Emily. You were obviously worried we get the bid and went out of your way to sabotage me. We did nothing of the sort. You most certainly did. I hope you get hit by a bus on your way home. Allison yelled. Some of the people walking past were eyeing them. Emily let the insult slide right off. She wasn't in the mood for any more games. Emily raised her eyebrows and crossed her arms over her chest. You still can't admit your failures. 
You do realize that's why you'll never be the kind of leader Eric was, right? You need to admit your mistakes so you don't make them again in the future. If you want to place all the blame on me, that's fine. But that doesn't mean you and I don't know the truth. Prior to the last meeting, you made promises, Allison. You made promises about cooperation. When I find out that it looked like the Parker family was going to remain in the running, I was about ready to give up. I never expected you guys to be out of the running. You can't blame me for this. That's crap, and you know it. You've done something behind the scenes to keep us from participating. Believe me, Emily. I am looking into it. Emily was done. She'd had enough. She realized no matter what she said, she would always be blamed for it. Emily decided to end the conversation now. You might want to think about how you're going to handle the reporters and the public relations nightmare you just created. I wouldn't add any more fuel to the fire by doing anything stupid right now. Think about it, Allison. You're on thin ice as it is. Emily felt sad that things had gone the way they had. At the heart of it, Allison was working in Eric's absence. She didn't want anything bad to happen to the company, but she had little control over such things. Allison yelled, You just wait. You listen to me. Emily had no intention of listening to anything else Allison had to say. She turned, leaving Allison to fume on the sidewalk. Turning back to her car, Allison unlocked it and threw her briefcase inside. Slamming the door after getting into the driver's seat, she drove off in a squeal of tires and a chorus of honking horns. Once Allison was gone, Emily focused her attention on the man beside her. He definitely was skinnier than the last time she'd seen him. He was also unshaven, which was not like Eric at all. What was happening to him? She was just getting around to thanking him for helping her when he turned around and left. He never looked back. Carter? She called after him, but he acted as if he didn't hear her, still walking away. Could it be that he was still angry about their previous encounter? Emily frowned and chased after him. She couldn't let him leave without talking to him. She moved between the people on the street and closed in on him at the next corner. He turned to face her, his eyes cold, his demeanor distant. Carter, are you still angry with me? She hoped he wasn't. Emily hoped he would tell her what was on his mind. She wanted nothing more than for him to tell her about how he was struggling with things. But looking at his face, she knew that wasn't going to happen today. No. It was a single word, his tone firm. Carter, you don't look well. Have you seen a doctor? Are you ill? She had wanted to remain distant while the Minter family bidding was going on, so she could stay focused and to give Carter time to think. Once it was over, she'd hoped they could work out their relationship. Even if he thought of himself as Carter, she was willing to support him and be by his side. I'm not angry, Emily. I'm getting plenty of rest, too. No need to worry about me. I'm doing just fine. She didn't believe a single word of what he'd said. Not one single word. He wouldn't look at her, his mannerisms distant, his voice not at all like his own. Emily could not help but feel discouraged. She could not figure out what the man was thinking. He didn't seem at all like himself. His animation in his face was gone. The light in his eyes dimmed. Are you sure nothing is wrong? He pushed her hand away as he answered. Thank you for your concern, but everything is fine. I'm of no concern to you. I have decided to live my life as Carter. I'm glad you've decided that. In her heart, she wasn't. She'd lied to him just now. She didn't understand why he was struggling with this again. I know you've always been concerned about me. I know you've always supported me even when I disavowed being Eric. I also think you've been dishonest with me. By saying you understand, I am Carter, but holding out hope I would not be. If I am not Eric, would you still want to be with me? He hadn't intended to ask. Because when he asked, he already knew what the answer was. If he wasn't Eric, he might be nothing in Emily's eyes. But he knew in his heart he had to ask. He had to know. He had to stop running away from the truth. He needed an answer. Emily was stunned. She frowned, her eyebrows coming together. She struggled to find the words. 
She wanted to tell him her suspicions. She wanted to tell him everything. Emily wanted to tell him that Tori was just using him in his surname to further her career. She had no feelings for the man standing in front of her. Would she believe him? Did it matter? She wasn't sure. Emily was about to tell him everything when he clenched his fists. She could tell his head was bothering him. Carter's hands cradling his head. It was then that Tori's sweet voice sounded behind them. Carter, why are you still here? Let's go. Father has already booked a seat. Let's go there now. I can't wait to tell everyone about the engagement. Tori quickly walked up and stood beside Carter. Although she had a smile on her face, her eyes were filled with darkness. Emily immediately frowned when she heard the word engagement. It wasn't something she'd expected to have to deal with today. Actually, Tori was a little nervous. She wanted to get an engagement ring on her finger quickly. She wasn't a fool. She knew very well who Carter would choose if given a choice. While she knew she still had some control over Carter, she recognized it was slipping. She had seen the way he reacted when Emily was talking to him. She needed to have this engagement become official and the wedding to follow soon after. Only then could she relax. Only then could she reap the benefits of the arrangement she'd been working for this entire time. Don't you think we should make it official? Are you ready to be engaged to me? Tori hadn't expected an answer. She had talked to him about it a thousand times before, and he never reacted. Until now. Unexpectedly, in a faint voice, Carter answered, Yes. Tori immediately felt a burst of joy in her heart. Her hands clapped together in rapid succession. She managed to shoot Emily a sideways glance to keep her in place. Sighing loudly, she laughed and said, It has been hard on Emily to see this expression of love today, I'm sure. This is just such an important day. I'm so happy, Carter. She hooked her arm beneath Carter's and directed him away with her. Emily looked at their backs and saw the two of them disappear from her sight. She did not wait for the man to turn around. She could not help but sigh in defeat. She held her head with both hands and squatted on the ground. Until she sat in the car, Tori wore a smile on her face. Closing the door behind her, she snapped her seatbelt in place. She was so happy until she looked at the man sitting next to her in the passenger seat. Her smile disappeared when she noticed his expression. She immediately frowned. Her mood soured. Carter, what's wrong? Tori was shocked by how pale Carter looked. Her body stiffened and she instantly understood why Carter left with her and agreed to the engagement. He was terrified of what Emily would think if she caught sight of how he looked. It's okay, please take me home. I want to rest. Carter sounded tired, his voice hollow. Tori looked at him, her hand holding Carter's. Let's go to the hospital, okay? I will call my father and ask him to arrange a room for you. Carter raised his hand and stopped her from using her phone. I said, I want to go home. She didn't want to sour the mood further, especially not with their engagement to announce. But she was worried. Carter didn't look well. Sweat had broken out across Carter's forehead. When Tori finally returned home, she wanted to stay by his side to take care of him. However, Carter closed the door immediately after he entered the bedroom. He did not plan to let her in at all. She could not help but frown. She stood there, staring blankly at the door. For the first time, she began to doubt and question herself. Was she really doing the right thing? Emily still couldn't get the image out of her mind of Carter accepting Tori's engagement proposal in front of her. Why had he done that? She sat in her office distracted, her thoughts on anything other than work. Emily announced to all how the bidding went. Everyone was thrilled with the news. Emily didn't want to celebrate and had excused herself to her office, where she'd remained ever since. We are basically assured we have gotten the project now. Estelle revealed a smile of victory as she walked into Emily's office. The news has already caught wind of it. All news reports have been filled with speculation about the future of the Parker family. Everyone assumed they would be one of the remaining companies. How's the situation looking for the Parker family? Did Allison do any damage control? Emily frowned and asked. Estelle smiled and said, You know better than that. 
she can't handle much of anything. She was apparently publicly humiliated by her boss. Everything has been taken from her and she has no responsibility. Emily did not respond. Instead, she quickly used the computer to check the share prices for the Parker family. Sure enough, the share prices had fallen quite a bit, far more than she would have imagined. After laughing, Estelle realized that there was something wrong with Emily's expression. She then asked, What's wrong? Is there a problem? Nothing. Emily turned off the computer, taking a deep breath. This incident was indeed a blow to the Parker family, but it was not necessarily a bad thing. They would recover. The business wouldn't be ruined. It might be a stumbling block for the immediate future, but not for long. The Parkers were resourceful. All right then, do we need to prepare in advance for the next stage? Everyone has heard about the Minder Project. Those who supply raw materials have been raising their prices. The current market price is much higher than when we first started. I feel like we should fortify a position by purchasing the raw materials we need before prices go even higher. Emily did not immediately nod when she heard that. Instead, she said, Let's wait and see what Glory is doing. Are you still worried about them? Estelle asked, a look of concern on her face. Emily did not hide it. Yes, it is not that I am worried about Glory specifically, but I am worried about the deal. Estelle frowned. I think everything is okay. Don't you think it's odd how the offer came from them to join forces? Doesn't it seem a little too perfect? The timing was impeccable, and the plan seemed greatly beneficial to us both. I feel like everything has been planned. It makes me feel uncomfortable, exposed. I don't like this feeling. Emily touched her chin, thinking back about it all. It was all a speculation, her intuition, if you will. There was no evidence to back up what she felt in her heart. Could you just be a little sensitive right now with everything going on? Estelle had a look of concern on her face. She knew Emily had been dealing with a lot lately. She had the feeling that it was only going to get worse, too. I know, I'm really doing okay. Thank you. I am thinking about Glory. There are so few resources in New York City capable of such a big business venture. I feel like strings are being pulled here and there, and we have no idea who is behind it all. Emily's face grew dark. How should they proceed now that they were but one hurdle away from winning the bidding project? She had no idea, the fear almost crippling in its weight. Estelle originally believed in the project very much. She had no qualms about doing business with Glory. Everybody had done business with each other at some point. Even though New York City was big, it wasn't that big. When you were in the business world, there were only so many companies you could trust to do business with. However, once she heard Emily's words, she was uneasy about Glory. Yes, under normal circumstances, no matter how trashy Allison was, it was easy to gauge what she would do in any given circumstance. It was an exceptional ability to have. Emily raised her eyebrows. We need to be wary of Allison. While we had nothing to do with the Parker family being removed from contention, Allison won't see it that way. She'll do everything in her power to make sure we suffer. The same goes for Tori. While we are in the running, I don't think for a second she wouldn't do something to make us falter at the last possible moment. We'll need to be prepared for most anything. The more you say, the more I feel that we have also been schemed against by Glory. Estelle rubbed the bridge of her nose, a headache coming on. Who knows, I suppose at this point anything is possible. Emily shrugged. I think we should monitor the way Glory reacts to the news. This will give us the proper direction. Estelle immediately nodded her head. The moment the results of the bidding came out, it shocked the entire business world of New York. In the eyes of all the businessmen in New York City, the Parker family was the number one business. No one had expected that they would be eliminated before the final stage. Thus, the news spread like wildfire. Some said that the Parker family had been losing money for a long time. However, they were still holding on. It was only a matter of time before they completely collapsed. There were also rumors that because Allison went up on stage to confront Tori, there were a lot of internal conflicts. If they are spending so much time with internal problems, they'll have no way to focus on business matters. The 
The worst rumor of all was that Victor Parker had to be hospitalized because of all the stress associated with the family. However, no matter how the rumors were spread, it was an unprecedented humiliation for the Parker family. Moreover, it was the kind of damage that likely could not be salvaged. Victor had no choice but to step forward and mobilize the people of the public relations department to make a swift adjustment to the matter. He wanted to control the movements of the public opinion. To do that, he had been swift in his decision and needed to alert the media right away. Even so, the share prices had been falling all morning. They were vulnerable, and Victor realized it. Allison had been a terrible keeper of secrets, many things now known to the media that he would have liked to have kept hidden. He didn't think there would be a hostile takeover, at least not in the near term, but some tough choices had to be made. They had already paid a heavy price for Allison's indiscretion and the poor public showing. Victor was frustrated. He had pain in his chest, and his doctors were recommending that he get to the hospital. However, he wasn't willing to accept that. Not now. His walking stick hit the ground hard. He pointed at Allison and started to curse. Do you have a brain or not? Do you have any idea what you've done? Do you have a plan? Do you know what to do? Dad, you can't blame me for this. This is not my fault. I was also plotted against. Allison felt wronged. She was being treated like a joke in the company. It didn't stop there, though, because she was constantly scolded when she got home. Why don't you ask them why they dared to scheme against you? Allison, do you think you control some garbage company? You control the Parker family. But now, what has it become? This year, I have protected you many times. I just want to give you a chance to grow, but what about you? What did you do? You made the Parker family a laughing stock in New York City. The longer Victor thought about it, the angrier he became. He just wanted to slap some sense into his daughter. Maybe she would wake up to the harsh truths of the business world. Allison curled her lips. When this project was released, you agreed to it. Now what's the point of scolding me? Do you think this is what I wanted? What did I tell you? You had to be careful when negotiating. I told you to not invest so heavily in case the project didn't come to fruition. Now we have invested most of our capital in raw materials. And are left with what? Nothing. Has such a shameful thing ever happened to the Parker family since it was established? The answer is no. There has never been a bigger gaffe by anyone in this company. He missed Eric a great deal when these circumstances came up. He had a temper, but he always knew what to say and how to say it to get the deal on and to make it as profitable as possible for the Parker family. Victor's face grew solemn. Since Eric's disappearance, he had been secretly investigating and observing. With the appearance of the man known as Carter, he had been under scrutiny by Victor's investigators. He had seen proof and felt with an almost 100% certainty that the man was Eric Cooper. The only questionable thing Eric had done was to get involved with Emily. He simply couldn't accept her into the family, not after her having served six years in prison for murder. To him, it didn't matter if she'd been cleared or not. She was just not the kind of person she wanted to be involved with. When he had appointed Allison to her current position, he had never imagined she would bring such shame to the company. Something had to be done. From today onward, you needn't worry yourself about the Parker family. I want you to take some time and stay at home for a few days until this dies down a little. Allison widened her eyes in disbelief. Father, no! Why are you doing this? If you do this, I'll have nothing else to care about. Please, give me another chance. You can't control it, Allison. I'm sure you ever could. If you continue on this path, the higher-ups will rebel one by one. There have been dozens of complaints coming in to have you summarily removed from your position. Doing it this way, I'm sparing you the public shame of firing you. It was like a spike had been driving straight into her chest. It was hard to breathe. She didn't want to accept Victor's words. She could tell Victor had made up his mind. It wouldn't matter what she said or what argument she had made. To him, the matter was settled. She was no longer in charge. She doubted if she would be allowed to be in charge ever again. Over the next few days, the Coopers were still preparing for the latter stages of their plan. Emily had been very busy. 
As she thought about the project and the mess the Parker family was in, she couldn't help but think about Carter. It was something she couldn't let go of. She and Carter had not seen each other for five days. The last time Carter asked her a question, she hadn't been able to answer because Tori had interrupted them. She knew there was only one Eric Cooper in the world. She loved him with her whole heart. There was no doubt in her mind that Carter was, in fact, Eric. She felt it in her heart. Because Emily was afraid Carter would lie to her again, she hadn't reached out to him. She wanted to wait until the Minder project was done before reaching out to him again. Once that happened, she would help him find a psychiatrist that could help him. Despite her misgiving and distrust, Emily was helpless but to think about the man she loved. She had been without him for an entire year, thinking he was dead. Now that he was back, she didn't want to give him up again. It was useless to think about it. It would drive her insane. Emily still wanted to see Carter, though. She wanted to see him without him knowing she was watching. She drove Estelle's car into the lower level of the parking garage and hid in a corner. She watched as many Parker family employees left, one after another. An hour later, she saw him. Carter walked out of the building and into the garage slowly. It was still afternoon. The sunlight was stronger than usual. Carter was wearing a black suit with a white shirt. His facial features looked overly pale beneath the sun's glare. Emily's heart trembled when she saw him. Carter stood under the sunlight. His entire body seemed to be covered in a layer of light. It was almost like he was an angel. It took Emily's breath away just a bit. He wasn't wearing his mask so she could take in his entire face. The scar was less obvious with each passing day. It was difficult to watch him from afar but she knew better than to approach him right now. Waiting in the car, she felt a bit like a police detective on a stakeout. She watched him walk to his car, get in, and drive off. She waited until he was gone before she started her own car and pulled out. Her emotions tumbled around inside, tears welling in her eyes. She longed for the day when it wouldn't be like this. Emily had gotten used to this type of meeting with Carter. She'd been doing it more and more lately. She had to see him, but knew it was slowly killing him to see her in person. She didn't want to cause him any more harm. Emily didn't want to spend any more time in meetings, but she had little choice. They needed to iron out the preparations for the final stage of the Minder bidding project. During these few days, Emily had gradually gotten used to this kind of meeting. This one was a bit odd, though. They had all thought George Phillips was the head of glory. That was who they'd been meeting with this entire time. But they came to find out that it was someone else. A gray-haired gentleman of approximately 50 years of age. His name was Todd Crane. They weren't used to dealing with Mr. Crane. It was like trying to handle a curveball. The difference was when Todd smiled, it reached his eyes. George smiled too, but it never reached his eyes. It's like this. I'm sure George told you guys before, right? This time, no matter who has officially signed the contract with the Minder family, both our families will cooperate and reap the benefits. As for the division of benefits, we discussed it and feel it should be spread out among the six of you and the four of us. What do you think? Todd smiled, but there was an undertone to his expression Emily didn't care for. Emily pursed her lips and took her time in responding. She said slowly, Forgive me for being direct. Yes, we fully agreed to work together on this and bid together for the Minder project. Neither one of us wanted to take on the burden of placing a bid on our own. By sharing the initial investment, we minimize the loss if things go south. That makes perfect sense. Emily continued, looking at Mr. Crane. This has to be said. Beyond this deal, if we start competing... The chance of Glory beating the Coopers will be minimal at best. Moreover, in the area of the new energy source, in terms of the distribution of resources, the Coopers has a far greater advantage. Mr. Crane, I'm a direct person, which I hope you can appreciate. Your offer is 64% and is unacceptable. Todd tried to maintain his smile, but it was difficult. He hadn't expected this result. He quickly looked at George, who shook his head. I wonder what you are considering. Can you share what your ideal breakdown would be? 
a 30-70 split. We pocket the 70%. Emily said simply. Her condition was quite excessive. She knew and they knew it. Todd's face immediately darkened, his smile flickering on his face. Emily didn't mention this before. George was still calm. He looked at Emily with a smile. You're right. We did not talk about it before. Emily spread her hands. This benefit sharing should have been discussed at the time. Emily did not know what George was thinking. She had forgotten such an important matter because her feelings were too complicated at the time. There is a big difference between those two percentages. I don't know if you can give us some time. After all, this involves the overall interests of the future. We need to do a comprehensive evaluation to know if this distribution can be carried out. George said slowly. Of course, Emily did not have any objections. She nodded quickly. The meeting ended, George giving Emily a meaningful glance. She couldn't read Todd's facial expression. After sending them off, Emily returned to her office. After a while, Estelle knocked on the door and came in. Isn't the 30 to 70 split a little too much for them? Estelle asked tentatively. Emily had mentioned it in the meeting room at the last minute. She did not know exactly what the other party was planning. It is quite excessive. Emily nodded without hesitation. It is precisely because it is too much that I brought it up. She smiled and continued. Did you see Todd today? No wonder Glory can make it look like that. He does not seem like an effective leader. I agree. This company should be under George's control. Moreover, Todd still relies on George for most of his decisions. The first thing he did when you mentioned the split was to look at George. He didn't decide without checking with George first. Those who didn't know better would assume George was the boss. I want to know if they can accept this 30 to 70 percent. Emily said in a quiet voice. It still touched her nose. Are you still worried? Yes. I want to see if they can accept this split. Let's see how George deals with this. Emily spoke about her plan. Estelle asked again. What do you think he will do? I don't know. Emily shook her head without hesitation. I can't tell what George is going to do. He is a very standard, successful businessman. His eyes and expression are hidden very well. Today, even when I mentioned the unexpected division of the 30-70 split, he didn't react. There wasn't any awkwardness or change in the atmosphere when he heard me. Emily had to be on guard against such an old fox. Okay, let's see how they choose in three days. Estelle sighed and rubbed her head. We have to be on guard at all times. Sometimes this makes my head hurt. There's just so much going on with this deal. There's no choice. We have to press on. The market is so big and everyone wants their slice of pie. That's why so many people scheme against each other. It's exhausting, isn't it? All we can do is continue to adapt to the changing markets and prepare ourselves for what's coming as best we can. Although Emily said it very rationally, she also hated this kind of life. It was even harder with the man she loved standing against her.